Hello, welcome to St. Andrew's Virtual Sunday School. Today I have a surprise for you. We have a special guest. She has traveled to us from far away and long ago. So let's listen carefully to her story. Hello, my name is Jehosheba and I'm stopping by to share my story with you. Let me tell you a little bit about my family. I am the daughter of a king. My father was King Jehoram and my grandfather was King Jehoshaphat. Being a daughter of royalty has many privileges. The most important privilege to me was being born into the family of my great, 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 great grandfather, King David. King David was a man after God's own heart and received a promise from God. God made a covenant with David and told him that from his family, a king would be born who would reign forever. All who were a part of King David's family understood that this promise meant that God's promised Messiah would be born from one of David's descendants. The Messiah would rule and reign forever and ever. This is a great promise, and every generation that has been born after King David has looked for this king. As you have been learning, I understand, about Israel's kings, you have been discovering that the kings of the northern ten tribes of Israel have all been wicked. Many of the kings that have ruled over the southern kingdom, the kingdom in which I live, have done what pleases the Lord. My grandfather, Jehoshaphat, was a man who loved God and sought him with all his heart. But after he died and my father Jehoram became king, my father did many wicked things. He killed all of his brothers, so no one could take away his power to be the king. He was married to a woman named Athaliah, the daughter of the wicked king Ahab and Queen Jezebel. My father did not fear God and did many evil things. God is perfect and holy. He must punish sin, and he had every right to destroy my entire family because of my father's wickedness. However, God is faithful to his promises. He's not like us. He doesn't forget what he has promised to do. He is not a liar. He made a covenant, a promise with David. And because of that, he would not destroy my family completely. God punished my father for his sins, and he was put to death by his enemies. Can you imagine having your father killed and no one was upset about it? He lived a wicked life and no one cared when he died. After my father died, my brother Ahaziah was crowned the new king. Well, his mother, Athaliah, the daughter of Ahab, she was a poor example in his life. She was a wicked influence. She actually encouraged him to do evil things. He was not like my great-great-great-great-grandfather David in any way. He was wicked and didn't please God with his life. Sadly, his life ended shortly after becoming king because of his wickedness. After my brother's death, Athaliah wanted to rule over the kingdom herself. She knew the only way she could maintain power over the kingdom was to kill any of the sons who could be king. She wanted to destroy the entire royal family. She began to kill any of the sons that she could find. And this is where I come into the story. My husband, Jehoiada, is a priest. Even though wickedness is seen everywhere in the southern kingdom, I never forgot God, the God who made a covenant with my great-great-great-great-grandfather, King David. When God says he is going to do something, he is going to do it. I didn't know when the promised Messiah was going to be born, but I knew that he would be born, and from someone in my family. I believed God would keep his promise, so I courageously stepped out in faith, and I took my nephew Joash, who was only a year old at the time. I took him, and I hid him safely away in a room with a nurse to take care of him. Jehoiada and I could not stand by and allow Queen Athaliah to destroy the descendants of King David's kingdom. For six years now, my nephew Joash has safely been hidden and protected from the queen. As a priest, Jehoiada had an opportunity to rise up 
in a very evil time and stand up for the promises of God. He did not allow Queen Athaliah to keep him from moving forward with a courageous plan to overthrow her wicked rule. My husband's faith in God's covenant promise to King David gave him great courage. He rose up and assigned men to help him, and they brought Joash out of hiding and proclaimed him king over the southern kingdom. The plan was to have men positioned in different places with different tasks around the temple. Jehoiada gave the men the plans and instructions on how to protect young Joash. Imagine the anticipation of this exciting event. All the men took their positions and waited for the moment King David's heir would be crowned king. That day, my husband and our sons brought out young Joash and announced him as the king. It was such a triumphant day. As Jehoiada placed the crown on Joash's head and anointed him king, the crowd shouted, Long live the king! What a beautiful sound to our ears. It was not such a sweet sound to the ears of wicked Queen Athaliah. When she heard the jubilant shouts of the people, Long live the king! She ran to the temple. She was furious when she saw the joyous celebration of the crowding of Joash. She shouted, Treason! Treason! I've been betrayed! Because she believed she was the one with authority over the people. Was she ever wrong? My husband sent out soldiers, and he had her put to death. They followed his instructions, and the wicked queen was dead, and no longer had any power over the southern kingdom. Her evil plans were stopped. I want to share my story with you. Because in this life, many times we don't feel like we have a purpose. We know that God says he has a purpose for each one of his children. But we wonder how he could ever use anyone as seemingly insignificant as ourselves. Well, if God could use a woman like me, who's only mentioned briefly in the passages of Scripture to fulfill his purposes, he can use you too. When you believe what God says from the pages of Scripture, you too can live courageously for him in a world full of evil. You may never know how God will use your example of courageous faith, but it will touch the lives of people all around you. Thank you for letting me visit you today. Let me leave you with this encouraging promise from God's Word. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. And be strong. Bye. Did you enjoy the story? Did you like meeting our visitor? She looks kind of familiar, I thought. Anyway, her story is told in the Bible, 2 Kings chapter 11, and it's called King in Hiding, and it's our lesson for this week. Athaliah, Jezebel's daughter, was queen mother in Judah. When she heard that her son, young King Ahaziah, had been killed by Jehu, as we learned last week, she did not stop to shed tears for her son, but set about gaining power for herself. She gave orders for the whole royal family to be put to death so that she could reign supreme. For six terrible years, Athaliah ruled Judah and taught the people to worship Baal. But one little prince had escaped the queen's cruel order, as we've just learned. His name was Joash, Ahaziah's baby son, Athaliah's own grandson. Well, his aunt snatched him to safety and hid him where his grandmother would never look. Where would that be? The temple of God, of course. She would never go into that building. Aunt Jehosheba was married to Jehoiava, a priest of God in the temple. There the tiny baby grew into a toddler and then a small boy, and still the secret was kept. When he was seven years old, his uncle and aunt decided that the time had come to crown him king. Jehoiada sent for all the palace and temple guards and swore them to secrecy. Then he showed them the young prince. They were excited and all ready to help make him king. No one loved wicked Athaliah and her bow priests. Jehoiada chose the time of day when the guards were changed so that both shifts would be present to help him. He ordered some soldiers to stand at the palace and others at the city gates and an armed band 
to be at the temple to protect Joash. Everything went just as he planned. When every soldier was at his post, Jehoiada led the little boy out and placed the crown on his head. He put a copy of God's laws in his hands, anointed him, and then he proclaimed, This is your king. The crowd that had gathered clapped their hands and began to shout, Long live the king! While well, Athaliah heard the noise, and she hurried to the temple. She took one look at this small boy, and she knew she had been betrayed. Treason! she called out. Treason! But no one rushed to defend her. Everyone there was glad that her wicked reign was over. Until Joash grew up, his uncle Jehoiad helped him to rule well and to obey God. The city was happy and peaceful now that a good king was once more on the throne of Judah. As we learned in our study of the kings of Israel and Judah, there were many, many wicked kings, but only a few who loved God and followed his ways. Many of these kings were killed by people who wanted to be king themselves. Some were killed by relatives, and a few were killed in battle. It wasn't easy to be king at a time like that. A king had to be careful. He didn't know who his friends were. There was a wicked king in Judah who we heard of last week, King Ahaziah. Remember, he was the second king killed by Jehu. He only reigned one year before he died, but when his mother found out about her son's death, did she mourn him? No. She gathered up all her grandsons and she killed them. That's right, she killed her grandsons because she wanted to be in power herself, and she didn't want to be bothered by any threat of grandsons or other relatives who would be king instead of her. How terrible a person must she have been to have done that? But, as we heard from our guest today, there was one little boy who escaped his grandmother. His name was Joash, and he was lucky enough to have a kind and thoughtful aunt and uncle who rescued him. Well, I hope you enjoyed having a guest come to our Sunday school today. She traveled quite a distance to get here. Jehoshaphat lived before the fulfillment of God's promise to David of sending a Messiah to the world. Jesus. Jesus was the Messiah. He was the king that was sent to earth through the family of David, and he reigns as king forever and ever. God has given us many promises in the Bible. When we believe that God keeps his promises, we can have courageous faith that impacts the lives of those around us. Even a small child can make a change. Look at the little boy in our story. Even at one year old, he was important to the future of his country. He was saved by his aunt and uncle for that very reason. Now, I know you're older than one year, but you're important too, even though you aren't child of a king. As Jehoshaphat told us, we too can make changes in the people around us. If we have the courage of our faith and are sure in our love of God, we can show that love to others. We can show God's love to others by how we act and the things we do. Every single day we have the opportunity to make a change in the lives of others. All we need to do is remember God's love to us and show that love to others. You may never even know how much of a change you make in someone's life, but God knows, and all we need to do is act. Have a great week. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.